Welcome to our lecture online and here's our next example of how to use partial fractions to solve integrals like this. Uh, let's take a look here. Let's, in the denominator we have an x and an x minus 1 quantity squared so it's a repetition of linear factors in x. So we can take the integrand 2x squared plus 3 and divided by x times x minus 1 quantity squared and write it as the sum of partial fractions. So this is done as follows. This is equal to a over the first factor x plus b over the second factor to the first power plus c over the second factor to the second power. So we have three fractions in this case. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to multiply each of the fractions by a factor, both the numerator and denominator, to make the denominator look exactly like the denominator over here. In other words, find the common denominator for each fraction that equals this denominator right here. Okay, that means this is equal to a times something and x times something. And what is that something? Well, let me find Finding my right here. Pen. So we need to multiply both the top and the bottom by x minus 1 to the second power, x minus 1 to the second power. Notice when I cancel that out, I end up back with what I started with, but now you can see that this denominator equals this denominator over there. So we need to do that for all three fractions. So the second fraction, we have b divided by, we have x minus 1, and what do we need here? Well, in this case, we need an x, because we're missing an x, and we're missing an x minus 1. So here we're missing an x, and an x minus 1. There we go. Now for the third fraction, uh, plus c divided by the quantity x minus 1 squared. In that case, in each, we're, in the numerator, we're missing an x, and in the denominator, we're missing an x. But now in each case, we have the same common denominator, so we can write all three fractions over the same common denominator. So this is equal to everything over uh, x times x minus 1 quantity squared. So in the numerator, we have x a times x squared minus 2x plus 1. Here we have plus b times x times x is x squared, and b times x times minus 1 is minus bx. And over here we have plus cx, and all we have to do here is multiply this through. So this is equal to ax squared minus 2ax uh, plus a plus bx squared minus bx uh, plus cx, and all that divided by the quantity x times x minus 1 squared. All right, now all we have left to do to find a, b, and c is to set up some equations, and the way we do that is to, by looking at this numerator right here, and looking at this numerator, make sure that the coefficients of x squared x and the constant are equal. So here we have an ax squared plus bx squared, and that must equal 2x squared, which means that a plus b must equal 2. Notice we don't have an x to the first term right here, but we do have a minus 2ax, we have a minus bx, and we have a plus cx, which means that minus 2a plus b, oh, not plus b, but minus b, I was looking at the wrong term, minus b, and plus c must equal 0, because again, there's no x term in the numerator there. And finally, the constant, we have one constant right here, which is a, and we have a constant right there, which is 3, so that means that a equals 3. A quick check to make sure we don't have any other constants. Nope, just the a right there. All right, now this should allow us to find out what a, b, and c are equal to. a is easy. We know that a is equal to 3. And now from here, we can plug that into the, the uh, equation here. So we have 3 plus b equals 2, which means that b is equal to 2 minus 3, or b is equal to minus 1. All right, and then finally, we can solve for c. Plug in what we know for a and b in here. So here we have minus 2 times a, which is 3, minus b, which is a minus 1, plus c equals 0. So that's minus 6, plus 1 equals, oh, plus c, plus c equals 0, or c is equal to, when I bring the minus 6 over, that becomes plus 6, the 1 becomes a minus 1, that would be uh, c equals 5. So we have a, b, and c are now identified, which means I can now write my original integral in terms of the sum of the three partial fractions, knowing what a, b, and c are equal to. So this is equal to the integral of a is 3 divided by x times dx 
uh, plus b, b is a minus 1, well since b is a minus 1, minus well put a minus here, so minus the integral of b, which is uh, 1 then divided by x minus 1 times dx, and finally plus the integral, uh, c in this case is 5 divided by the quantity x minus 1 quantity squared, of course also times dx. All right, now let's see if we can integrate these integrals. This is easy. This is equal to 3 times the natural log of x. Here, this is easy as well. That would be minus the natural log of x minus 1. So, so far, so good. How about this one right here? Well, we could take the 5 and move it in front. And x minus 2, since the differential of the what's inside the parentheses here is simply dx, we can integrate that. That would become a minus 5 times the the quantity x minus 1 to the minus 1 power dx because this is actually x minus 1 to the minus 2 power and when we integrate it the negative comes out and we end up with an x minus 1 to the minus 1 or we can write this as 3 times the natural log of x minus the natural log of x minus 1 minus 5 divided by x minus 1 to the first power plus a constant of integration and here we have the integral or the result of this particular integral. Oh, yes, yes, yes. That doesn't belong there anymore. We're done with the dx's at that point. Okay, very good. That's how we do that.